you are about to experience firsthand, up close and personal, an after action review. You'll see how an after action review, or AAR, can be a vital learning tool, how it gives all of us and our agencies a solid framework for attaining and disseminating critical organizational knowledge. For years, AARs have benefited private business and the military. Today, the entire interagency wildland fire community has also adopted this proven learning process. As you're about to see, an AAR is a professional discussion of an incident or event that enables firefighters to discover what happened, why it happened, and how strengths can be sustained and weaknesses can be improved upon. Using this simple set of four basic questions, all AARs follow the same format, involve an exchange of ideas and observations, focus on improving proficiency. The AAR is not a critique. Its central focus is to simply discover why things happened, so everyone is better prepared for the next time. The AAR is held immediately after the incident or event by the personnel involved. The incident's leader facilitates this process. The AAR focus is always on what, not who. As you will see by this simulation, the AAR encourages people to speak freely. It provides an open, honest, and professional discussion. It is a dialogue, not a lecture or a debate. It can include respectful disagreement, but never insubordination. If done right, this simple exercise can be a valuable key to an ongoing open communication process that both educates and motivates. AARs will help us all sharpen our wildland fire management skills, knowledge, and capabilities. Long day, huh? All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started on the after action review for the uh, Horse Creek burn. Uh, we had a pretty good day out there. Uh, the purpose of this after action review is, is to uh, focus on, on the what, not the who. Okay, we want to learn from today's burn and apply as much of that knowledge as possible into the next burns. We all know this was a, a big deal interagency set up, sat on the shelf for two years. There was a lot of pressure to get this done, and we're going to be doing more of this. Okay, we'll probably be doing a lot of these burns in the future. So what I'd like to do is capture as much uh, knowledge and uh, learn from our, our mistakes and learn from our positives today and, uh, and wrap that up into the burn package. The, the ground rules uh, are very simple for the after action review. Uh, let's not make it personal, let's keep it professional. Uh, and, and please don't interrupt each other, let folks say their piece, get their comments out, but do try to keep your comments short so we can get out of here before it gets too much later. And then the final thing is what's said here stays here. And there's a caveat attached to that. Uh, what I need to do is, is to capture as much information in writing so we can put it into the packaging. And if Pete, you could take notes for us. Sure, we have to. And, and the way we want to take the notes is, uh, I'll give you an example. If, if we decided that uh, through this after action review that lathe didn't fill up the drip torches and that led to a delay getting ignition started, we wouldn't say that. We would say, uh, make sure drip torches are filled up the night before to avoid delays in the morning. So we don't attach names. It's not about blame. Uh, I'm sure as we go through this, all of us are going to you know, focus on things we could have done different. Or, so let's just keep the names out of it. And uh, let's make sure we capture the important points. And we'll get it wrapped up. OK, uh, is everybody good to go? We get started? I'm going to go off the uh, IRPG, the simple four question format, uh, after action review, page 17. And uh, let's start with the first question. What was the overall objective of the burn? Well, the uh, objective, uh, it was a fuels reduction burn. We were looking to reduce uh, hopefully 75% of, uh, of the fuel loading in the area with as, mit as minimal damage as we could to the, uh, uh, the mature trees in the area. 
those were our, our primary objectives. Uh, as far as what was planned, the uh, as you mentioned, the Horse Creek burn, we've kind of had it sitting on the shelf for a while. A lot of time effort went into the planning, uh, the, the writing of the burn plan. Uh, but busy season, we were kind of slow out of the chute to get things going. Uh, didn't have quite enough talent on the district or qualifications, so brought some new folks in to help us out. And, okay. Um, that was the plan. All right, real good. Uh, let's let's focus on uh, on the planning part. The first question: What was the uh, what was the ignition pattern, Chris? Uh, you were the ignition specialist out there today. Uh, what was your plan for firing the unit? Well, the plan was Curtis to start up in the northeast corner uh, with two ignition was... teams. One larger than the other with Curtis or with uh, Travis excuse me holding for us to, to light a test fire and if that went well to proceed and tie it down into Horse Creek and then also to take fire south along the ridge. Okay what was the plan for holding? Travis you were the holding specialist out there what was what were you foreseeing? That was pretty straightforward um, keep it in the unit you know I'm holding this ridge and this is the hand line so I focused a lot on that. I wasn't as concerned with the, um, the drainage, but you know, I had a hand crew up there, and we had engines with the road, and pretty straightforward holding show. Okay, uh, let's move on to what actually happened. We started burning. I believe it was about nine o'clock. We started ignition. Uh, Chris, why don't you fill us in on that? Yeah, Curtis, it was, uh, let me pull it out. Yeah, about 9 o'clock, began ignition, uh, lit the test fire. Test fire went well. Um, from that point, we got the go from you and fired back to the west along the north perimeter and then began taking fire as well down the south end. Okay, the two engine captains, uh, Scott, what, what did you think of the test fire as things progressed? I thought that uh, test fire uh, was going well. Uh, Chris uh, and Travis and I, we all worked together and we were in agreement that the test fire was in uh, meeting our objectives at the time of the test fire. Cool. Can you make sure you capture that piece sure. in the notes? Test fire looked good. Lath? Yeah, I, you know, I agree. It looked really well. I mean, uh, it was doing exactly what we wanted. So, I agree. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement that the uh, test fire was good. We got progressing up. Uh, Travis, you started firing up the ridge. Mark, what, uh, how'd things look from down there and you're the local fire department Well, chief. you know, we came in pretty nervous with the residents all concerned because we're burning in their backyard. So with the smoke and everything, they were a little concerned, but I was pretty happy what I saw with the test burn and what was going on. So from my point of view, it was a good thing. All right, if I remember right, about 1100, things started to change. I just want to move ahead because it seemed like it was pretty much uneventful up until that point. Uh, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but I believe the burn pattern looked about like this. Does that look close? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's take it up to 11 o'clock. Uh, we got the fire into this point. Chris, you're running ignitions and you're at this point. What, what, uh, what's going on? Well, about 11 o'clock, uh, we, we got to about there. Things were going really well. Uh, winds were in good shape. We had good fire behavior, but we got into an area that, that surprised us that there wasn't, the, the prep hadn't been completed through there. Um, so the prep, the prep wasn't completed. We were still continuing to fire as conditions were still uh, pretty optimal as far as getting the, the objectives met. Um, and shortly thereafter, we got a little bit of a wind shift and, and got a spot fire across the line. Okay, let's hold it up there. Now, Travis, you're holding. Yeah. And you're up there with Chris. Um, Chris was saying that he didn't feel that prep was the standard. Uh, what, what do you, how do you feel about that? Well, it's hard to say, but I agree with him because I'm the one that did the prep. Um, but, but he's right. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, done as well as it had been previous to that, you know, all the area before. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's true. Okay, we we can uh, touch on that a little more in question three. So every so everyone's in agreement that the the prep probably wasn't done or was not done to standards up on the ridge. Okay. Yeah, that was a big part of it, Curtis. The other part is you know it, it was probably my fault as much as anything. I didn't get out and scouted ahead of time. I knew most of the folks. We worked together when I brought the <clears throat> the, the module over of hot shots. Uh, 
Travis was the only one that had more clothes. Okay, so. and what we'll address that as we go on. I just want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with that statement that there are some issues with the prep. Now, uh, uh, you were firing pretty aggressively. If I remember right, you covered that distance in a very short time. What, what were you thinking with that? Well, it, the conditions were going well and, and uh, probably got a little bit overzealous and, and, and tried to get her done a little faster than we really needed to. The first part was going well. We had covered quite a bit of country and the winds were real favorable, so we continued. Uh, thought it may be just a short section of prep, and so we decided we'd continue to go for it. Okay. Well, let's let's bump the timeline up. Somewhere just after 11, if I remember right, uh, Travis, somebody called in a wind shift. Is that correct? About 11 o'clock? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, Scott, that was you. You were taking weather. I, w I was taking weather, and about 11.15 or so, we started getting strong winds out of the west. So we got a wind shift, just to wind visualize shift out of the here. West. You yes. got more of a west component. And, and you contacted everyone on the radio? I did, yes. Okay. And I was in communications with ignitions and holding. OK, so then we got, uh, it's about 11.15, I think, is when we had spot fire, right? And that took place just over the ridge right here. Travis, why don't you, uh, why don't you fill us in on what happened at that point? It was, it was pretty amazing how quickly it happened as he called in the wind shift and uh, right away we got a spot and uh, as holding I, I contacted Blake and um, let him know the general area and right away he knew where it was and he knew the best quickest way to get there and he was on top of it and got there and, uh, I was trying to get down there with the holding forces but he had he pretty much had it wrapped up Okay, Lay, so you took action on the spot. Why don't you go ahead and uh, show us what happened here on the table? All right. I'm kind of pretty familiar with this area and, and didn't notice the wind switch. But I was kind of ready for it. Uh, we came right in here, and, uh, and, and I had the Forest Service guys right off the bat start, start doing a little structure protection. I called Mark because he had the bigger engine uh, to come in, and, uh, and the other engine was... Uh, was actually on the fire when Mark got here. Uh, he took over the, the structure and, and the other engine helped on the on the fire. And uh, you know, the, the spot fire actually went better than I thought. I thought it was gonna blow out, but uh, everybody worked well together and we hammered it. And you know, even even with the wind that uh, kind of pushed him towards the cabin. But uh, the propane was, a, was an issue right off the bat. But uh, everybody did really well and hammered it. And you knocked it down about an acre? Yeah, yeah I, I, probably an acre. Now, Mark, you were out there. You brought your uh, structure engine from the, from the fire department. Uh, what was going through your head when you pulled up? Well, with the structure engine, you know, our guys have got the proper PPE for the structure. So we bunkered up, got around the house, deployed our hoses, and, you know, uh, we secured the propane tank. Uh, our guys are pretty good at with the hazmat stuff and the propane. So we did, felt there was no issue with the propane, but we had everything secure while the other two engines uh, did their thing out there in the uh, spot fire. So I thought, from our point of view, we work really good, all three engines. Yeah, I appreciate you guys being there, too. It made it a lot easier for us to, to do our thing, knowing you're back there. I also thought the communication between the three engines was, was really good. They, I mean, the focus, uh, the structure was, the structure guys took care of the structure, and, and we went out and took care of the wildland. So, I thought that communication between the three uh, engines was really good also. OK, in the interest of time, uh, what I'd like to do is, if everybody's in agreement, can we just kind of go back to the burn, the spot's wrapped up, and th then we progress with the firing operation down the ridge and back to the creek. And uh, uh, is everybody OK with moving on to that on, next, on, the, on the second question? And we'll come back and address some of these issues on number, the third question. So Chris? Uh, you guys regrouped and you started going down the ridge? Yeah, once uh, once we got the spot under control, uh, we kind of transitioned back into those uh, initial roles of, of ignition and, and holding, and we continued to progress, progress down the ridge. Had to take the crew while they were working on the spot fire down below. We couldn't really access it, so took the, the hotshot crew, and they continued to prep, finished up the prep um, on down to the, to the end, and then we had the ignition team go ahead and, and finish down on the ridge, and it went well from there. Okay, let's go ahead. If everybody's cool, we'll, we'll call that good. And, and let's jump into the why it happened. And, and the why part, I'd like to focus on, on the spot fire. Real quick. 
But Lathe, you had mentioned that you know you weren't, you didn't seem like you were surprised with the spot. And you've worked in this area a lot. Did anything you can add to this? Yeah, about every every day about that time. Well, it, it shifts there, and and uh, you know I've been on on the district for 15 years, so I, you know, like I said, it didn't surprise me. I was just hoping I'd be wrong. I wasn't. I sure wish you would have said something at the briefing. You could have <laughs> well, planned for it. You know, I kind of, I, I should have. I was, to be honest, a little butt hurt that I wasn't involved a little more, you know, uh, with my experience. And so I, you know, I kind of, I should have said something. If I may interject on, on further of why this probably happened, um, it was probably, a, we mentioned a little bit about the pressure. I think there's a little pressure to get this thing done in a hurry. We're up against the end of the fiscal year. Uh, and like I said earlier, it's been a busy year, fighting fire. Even though we had this thing on the shelf ready to go, we didn't spend a whole lot of time from a district perspective getting it ready for you guys. We had to ask folks to come in and help. Um, I had Lath off doing other things at the time. We had Travis down to help us prep. Um, big learning lesson notes I'll put down for ourselves is uh, to treat every burn. Even though this was only 100 acres, I think we were pretty relaxed knowing you folks were here to help. We should have. Uh, stepped it up a notch and been a little bit more prepared for you and we certainly could have scouted that line as well and mr gordon as a district fmo you know in the roll up if we can get this type of stuff captured that'll help us back at home too because we're under the same pressure. absolutely okay i think we're, we've kind of slid into the to the final question on, on what we can do next time it was a good lead in pete with uh, uh sounds like for the most part just slowing down taking our time getting together talking about stuff Uh, Lace, I think we, we kind of caught, uh, kind of wrapped up what we talked about. Get you, get you folks, you guys that have been around for a while, more involved in the, in the planning. Is there anything that you could have done different uh, on the day of the burn? You know, I should have spoke up and uh, I, I should have maybe even came out a little earlier and drove the line and, and you know, I could have said we need to, you know, fix that one area. And, and I, you know, I should have spoke up mainly. And it's just like with Mark, the positive is having you here, and, and the thing to learn from is to have you more involved. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, when there is a lot of overhead, I you get a little intimidated, don't want to say much. And, sure. and uh, you know, I felt like maybe you guys wouldn't listen to me, so I didn't, I didn't talk. Well, I tell you, after today, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> All right. Say the cabin. And I don't want to, don't want to uh, word this topic out, but I just want to make sure that we're in agreement that uh, for holding an ignition that we can all and everybody else that uh, we need to uh, take a look at our prep, uh, probably have better standards, more involvement. Does that sound good? Yeah. And then Chris, if we had to do the same burn again over tomorrow, uh, would, how would you do your ignition pattern? As far as ignition, probably a little bit slower. You know, one of the keys is getting folks out there and ensuring the prep's done. Maybe have a couple of folks is to, to clean it up as we go. But again, just take it a little bit slower and uh, be a little more mindful of, of what's happening with the wind and we got into the fuel, so. Now Scott, you've been pretty quiet today. Anything you want to add? Um, just something I was noticing uh, with operations, uh, when we did get the spot fire, uh, I think as uh, something that we could use as a collective group is uh, we could have discussed uh, trigger points uh, a little more uh, profoundly in the, in the briefing that if this does, if this something does happen on the lee side of the ridge there that that this is what's going to happen. We're going to stop ignition. Holding is going to hold. The engines are going to go over there, and, and we'll have that trigger point in place uh, that we can use next time. That's an excellent suggestion. Something else as far as the future. Uh, some of the contingency stuff was a little bit unclear in the briefing. And that was me. As, yeah, as burn boss, you know, I've got a 70-page burn plan in my pocket, and I think I talked, what, 15, 30 seconds about contingency, and uh, fortunately, you guys were here. So that's, that's a good one for me to take home. Chris, I think in the future too, that. you know, the way you're asking each of us, you know, before the, in the briefing, you should have done that too, maybe, you know, said, Lath, how do you feel about this? And, and Mark, how do you, you know, it's kind of, you did your briefing and then we went and, and lit, so. Okay, so open it up, give a little more time for questions, that 20 yeah, second I, pause for questions in the morning. And, and I know we were in a rush to, you know, we were in the window, so. Oh, it was perfect. But it was. And that's what I was thinking the whole time as we got to get started, so. But that's a good point. If, if we had talked before, I would have known some of these things. 
Okay, I, I know, I think we all probably want to get home. It's uh, been a long day. And anything else to wrap it up? Any I just want comments? to thank everybody for helping us meet these targets uh, and coming out and helping uh, meet the quals on the district for me. I appreciate all the help and good work uh, for those of you visiting and my, my own guys too. Thanks. And we'll get this uh, AAR, this roll-up will be in the final package. As we all know, this is interagency and it's been a big deal. So I know my boss and I think all of our bosses want, want to look at this and, uh, and it'll be in the package for next year. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you.